Episode 5 of Season 1 is 522666. It aired on November 22, 1996. The show opens in a British-style pub filled with people. However, there is a man present that doesn't seem to be partaking in the atmosphere. No, instead he's imagining the patrons in an explosion. The song playing in the pub is I Must Not Think Bad Thoughts by X. Very subtle. He calls 911, but only punches in some numbers. 522666. He leaves the pub and stands in a parking structure across the street. He smokes some cigarettes and, you know, some other stuff. And then the building blows up. Frank's watching news about the explosion on TV, and we see the bombers actually helping victims in the aftermath of his work. Frank immediately starts packing. This isn't exactly the kind of case we normally see Frank investigate, so I'm not sure why he's assuming they'll call, but then again, what do I know? Frank and Peter join up with the FBI task force being headed by Agent Jack Pearson. The 90s were an era of crazy right-wing militias, and so we have some crazies taking credit for the bombing. Son of freedom and justice, repent! Abolish the IRS! The people will prevail! Frank deciphers the tones from the 522666 call to mean kaboom, and he's not amused. Frank sees a parking structure across from the pub, and his profiler senses start tingling. He finds some cigarette butts on the floor and determines that the killer was there watching. He was here, watching. Pearson and Frank find the killer's, um, leavings in the trash. My own preference is to imagine girls who wouldn't date me. If that wasn't clear enough, we then see the killer listening to the news reports and police scanners while breathing hard and building a bomb. Okay, we got it. He gets sexually excited by blowing stuff up. Frank drops some knowledge on the task force. The bomb was complex, intricate, perhaps overly so. I believe this trait extends to his obsessions. Expect to find an array of eavesdropping devices, scanners, cell phone cloners, RF receivers. He's listening to every transmission we make. Frank uses himself as bait to attract the killer and get him to communicate with him. And it works. Contact. Using the highest technology available in 1996. Wait, is that a reel-to-reel -reel recorder? Was that still high-tech in 1996? The case is worrying on Frank, but he continues to push himself. The killer calls Frank and finally talks to him. Frank plays hard to get, but eventually listens to what he has to say. Who is this? A star. They keep him on the line long enough to get a sector grid and take the hunt on the road. Unleash the hounds. While on the stakeout, Catherine calls Frank's phone wondering why she hasn't heard from him. Catherine tells Frank that Jordan had a nightmare about him, but the killer interrupts by calling again. She overhears Frank talking to the killer. He tries keeping him on the phone, pandering to his ego so they can track him down. You're really a very important man. Well, thank you, sir. I'm glad you see that. Catherine hangs up somewhat horrified by what she has heard. The killer gives away that the time of the next blast will be 9 a.m., meaning the clock is ticking to find it. The task force starts canvassing the area to find the bomb before it can go off. Frank tells Peter there's more to this than just the thrill. First he alerts the authorities there's a bomb. After a day, he needs more. So he has to contact us, taunt us to the point of near capture. What will he do to increase his excitement? This time, the killer has inserted himself directly into the chaos by placing it in his own workplace. Frank sees a parking structure and is reminded of the first bombing. He finds evidence that the killer was there, but it's too late. The killer calls to taunt Frank. He rushes into the next building, but is blocked out by another blast and is saved by the killer. It's all right. I'll get you out of here alive. Frank wakes up in a hospital, and Catherine tells him he was saved by a man named Raymond Dees in the building. Frank watches Dees being interviewed and realizes that he's the killer. Kaboom. Frank brings his suspicions to the task force, but Agent Pearson is reluctant after what happened in Centennial Park. A quick history lesson for those too young to remember. There was a bomb set off during the 1996 Olympics at Centennial Park in Atlanta, Georgia. A security guard named Richard Jewell discovered the bomb before it was detonated and managed to clear most of the spectators away. 
However, the FBI and the media focused on Joel as the presumed suspect. He was later cleared of all suspicion, and a right-wing nut named Eric Robert Rudolph was identified as the culprit. So Agent Pearson is right to be concerned about blaming the hero so soon after the black eye of Centennial Park. However, Frank explains the killer needed more than just watching the chaos he created. He had to insert himself into the chaos. A look at these military records shows that he was an explosive specialist in the army. And the task force jumps into action with an awesome SWAT raid, Seven style. But Deez is already gone. He knew they were coming from his psycho bomber HQ. Pearson sends Frank home to get some sleep, but Deez has some other plans for him. The task force overhears the conversation and pursues. Deez taunts Frank and implies that he has rigged a bomb to his car. Pearson sends in a SWAT team to take out Deez before he can detonate the bomb. They search Frank's car, but there's no explosive. But in the end, Deez got exactly what he wanted. He will be remembered. 522666 is a bit unique since the subject matter is about a bombing rather than the typical serial killer of the week. Although the method of killing might be very different, the motivation is very similar. Dees is sexually aroused by causing chaos, but he wants more. He inserts himself into the chaos in order to become a hero, but then creates a situation where he knows he'll be killed by police so he can be remembered for what he has done. Catherine is given a little bit more to do this episode, but the current of uneasiness and concern is always present when she's talking with Frank. Rewatching these episodes now, it seems like the writers were telegraphing what was going to happen with their relationship very early on. This episode was written by Glenn Morgan and James Wong, who wrote some of the greatest X-Files episodes ever. This was their first Millennium episode, but they will go on to have a huge hand in the direction of Season 2. Director David Nutter, who directed The Pilot and Gehenna, along with a slew of X-Files episodes, returns for 522666 and its shows. The direction is very cinematic, and the cat-and-mouse moments between Dees and Frank are truly exciting to watch. Our notable guest star this week is Agent Pearson, played by Sam Anderson. A character actor probably best known for his role as Bernard on Lost, alongside fellow Millennium alum, Terry O'Quinn. 522666 is a unique episode, and I think one of the better episodes of the first season. The killer Raymond Dees isn't exactly a charismatic and memorable character, but his motivation and the cat and mouse game between he and Frank make it a standout. That's it for this episode of the Millennium Rewatch. Until next time, this is who we are. <laughs>